Britain's prestigious literary prize, The Booker, has announced its long list of novels, and bookworms are praising its diversity. If I were going to tell... Nine out of 13 titles are from female writers, and half of those are from racial minorities. What's more is that most of the novels are from authors making their debut. The Booker Foundation says some authors who have launched their careers in the midst of COVID-19 may now have a chance to reach the readers they deserve. Samir Rahim now joins me from London. He is a judge for this year's Booker. Hi, Samir. Thanks a lot for joining us today. So, um, this was an unusual year in terms of you judges, I think, making most of the meetings online. So, was it an easy discussion between the judges this year? Well, it was certainly different. Uh, two of our judges are based in America. So, in the early days, we did have a, a couple of people zooming in, as it were. Um, to the meetings in London, but very soon we were all uh, virtual, so we would all um, have to um, uh, do it online. I think, like everyone else, we were just getting used to it, and now it seems very, very normal. But I, I, I would like, at some point, for us all to get together uh, in a room and actually have a proper discussion, or at least, you know, meet up for a drink or something. But I guess you had a lot of discussions as well, because narrowing down the list of 162 titles to this uh, long list shouldn't have been easy. So tell me how the discussions were. I mean, were you guys all um, of the same opinion in general? Well, it, it's always great when you realize that everyone else likes the same books that you do. And that's a, a, that's a lovely feeling. And there are a few books on this list where we were all pretty enthusiastic. Um, but there were also ones that we disagreed over. Um, and inevitably, because there's five different judges, um, it's necessary, that it's inevitable that we are going to disagree. And what's the fun of the process is trying to make an argument based on evidence and rationality um, that the book that you think is better should um, should get the um, get the get the place on the long list. Um, but inevitably, it's going to be subjective, and there's going to be different opinions. That's mm -hmm. all part of the enjoyment of the process. Well, I hope the long list isn't full of titles that you disagreed on. So the debuts are more than half of the list. Why is that? And what does it tell about the state of literature today? It's so interesting because we didn't actually realize that until I think very, very late in the day. When we read the books, particularly I have to say because, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we started reading things on PDFs sent through, so electronic books, e-books rather than simply uh, getting a, a half copy of the book sent to us. So all the other information about who the author was, what their nationality was, with what first book, whether it was the first book, a lot of that information wasn't included. So we looked at these books purely on terms of what they, um, 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 what they seemed to us. And I think that often with, with first books, there is a kind of explosion of a writer's voice, um, a voice that has been kept up or pent up for, for a long time and, and it comes out. Some of these first novels, they don't read like first novels. They don't mm. read like books, uh, apprentice works. They read work, like books that have been worked on for years and years and years. And the author really wanted to say something more powerful. And personally speaking, I can't speak for the other judges, um, some of the writers who were on their sort of fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth novels, it felt a bit like they were going through the motions, as if they didn't have much left to say. Um, uh, but these these novels um, really do do have new voices. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think is is it just coincidence that the jury uh, you noted that the selected books they represent a moment of cultural change, and you have a lot of uh, debut novels there. Yeah, I suppose um, novels are funny things. They take a long time to write. And often they don't react to what's happening now. They react to what's been happening five years ago or even 10 years ago. Um, we've opened up the prize to um, all sorts of different kinds of writers. Anyone who writes in English, there's no national restrictions as there were before. And so that inevitably is going to lead to a greater variety of voices um, and um, a different kinds of stories being told. That's exciting. I think. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if uh, the diversity was intentional this year, because more than half are writers of colour. Well, I think it would be unusual, given, as I said, it's a prize that's for people who, who write in English, 
Um, and English is obviously an international language spoken by people all over the world um, and used by them, that if it, it wasn't diverse in that way. Um, people have different passports. They maybe live in America, but maybe had origins in Britain or in, or in, uh, in Africa or in other parts of the world or China, as some of the writers on this list have. Um, we live in an international world. We live uh, in a world of multiple identities. And um, uh, for us, um, again, there was no particular, um, uh, uh, we weren't aiming to have a diverse, as it were, list. Um, and diversity can be measured in different ways. It's not just mm. an author's background, it's also an author's uh, sensibility, the way they approach things. Um, so I would say that um, it's a healthy list because yes, it does have people from lots of different kinds of backgrounds, but it's also healthy because it's different kinds of novel. You know, you have historical novels on there, you have novels set in different parts of the world, um, you have uh, contemporary sort of satirical novels. So that variety was um, was important to us as well, I think. Okay, you sound happy with the um, diversity of the long list, diversity in every sense of the word. Samir Rahim, thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. We are now joined by Zitsi Dangaremba, who is on the Booker Prize long list for writing This Mournable Body. Hi Zitsi, congratulations, how does it feel? Thank you so much. It feels wonderful. Um, the Booker Prize is something every writer dreams of being associated with. And finally, it happened for me. I'm really overjoyed and delighted. It's lovely. And I, I wonder what uh, the meaning of literary awards is for you as a writer, as a very experienced and very successful writer. Yes, well, I'm Zimbabwean and I live and write in Zimbabwe and we don't have a big reading public in Zimbabwe. The book industry is small. And so uh, we don't really get a lot of returns in terms of income for our writing. And so to be recognized at the level of the booker means, of course, that I will have a bigger audience, at least I hope so. And it's just great to know that people will be buying and reading the book. So that's very meaningful for me. And I wonder if you ever considered moving out of Zimbabwe and, you know, working in another country, because that would definitely give you more um, showcase. Yes, definitely. Uh, being out of Zimbabwe in the northern part of the world would give me more showcase, as you say. But I have lived out of the country, in fact, and I made the decision to come back in 2020. And that was because my country was then and still is going through some growing pains, let's say. And I wanted to be able to witness to those growing pains. I felt that my first audience should really be people who I meet on a daily basis. And then I try to write in a way that it also has a general accessibility. Okay, so that's actually uh, also, I guess, uh, witnessed in your trilogy as well. I want to ask you about this mournable body, the, the third installment that came years after, I think 30 years after the first one. I wonder what kind of an experience it was for you to turn back to your heroine after so long. Well, for people who read the three books, it is a long period in between each of them. But for me, it wasn't really because I was with the characters all the time. Even when I w wasn't actively writing, uh, the characters were with me and I was conscious that I had not completed the story. And so I knew that I would have to complete the story. And of course, um, when a book comes out, it may seem as though it's only taken a year or two to write. But oftentimes, and definitely with me, uh, my books take quite a long time to write. So I've had a 30-year relationship with those characters. And do you feel like you're really, um, you know, you're done with the story? You sealed the deal? <laughs> yes, I do think I am done. I remember in one of her essays, Toni Morrison said that characters can be greedy and they can be demanding and that at some point you have to just ignore them and get on with the rest of your life and your writing. And so I think I've come to that point with those particular characters. And do you feel like Tambu, your heroine, was being a little bit greedy in that sense? 
<laughs> yes, I do believe that she was being a little bit greedy. <laughs> and um, I, I do like to build my characters in a way that they reflect what is happening on the ground around me in society. And so I felt that to have a character who wanted a lot for herself and did not often think very much about what that meant for other people was an interesting way of examining the Zimbabwean society as it is today. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of critics said that you're using, using off second person narrative and this one was sort of distancing yourself uh, from X, Y, Z, whatever that was, the character, the country, the narrative. But I want to ask you, if you want to talk about it, I wonder why you did it that way. Uh, I did it that way because it was the only way the story worked for me. The first two novels are in the first person, and so I did try to write this mournable body in the first person. But this character is not the most pleasant of people, and so getting so close to somebody of that nature as Tambudzai was at the beginning of the book, was really difficult for me. And I felt that if it was difficult for me, it would probably be difficult for the readers also. So then I thought, well, I can't go to the third person because that is too distant now from the other two, which were in the first person. And so I just tried the second person as an experiment and I found it worked perfectly. It enabled me to express what I needed to say. Lovely. Okay, before we wrap up, the short list of six books will be announced on 15th of September. Do you think that we're going to see you there? I have no idea. Um, I hope the judges like it sufficiently to put it on, but I'm really grateful to have made the long list. Okay, well, hopefully we'll see you there. Zitsi Dangoremba, thanks so much for joining us on Showcase today. Thank you.